Hi everybody, welcome back to Meet the Maskies and another video in my Tarlov cyst disease journey. It's a journey that nobody wants to be on. Trust me, I know, but I figured if I have to be on this, then a great way for me to kind of just get my thoughts down because I'm not one to necessarily journal or sit there and write is to just vlog through it. And that's what I've been doing. So if this is your first video that you're seeing as this tar love cyst disease journey then i highly recommend you check out my other videos in this playlist because i have literally been kind of videoing throughout this whole diagnosis so i talk about what tar love cyst disease is from my understanding there's a lot of medical pieces to it that i don't necessarily understand but um how i got my diagnosis how i've been coping with it and most recently I had surgery. So I did have the Tarlov cyst surgery. I'm not gonna get into that because I have that in my other videos. So I highly recommend you check that out. I videoed during surgery week and then even throughout my recovery, I am now two months post-op. So I feel like I'm in a really good place to be able to talk about some of my favorite things that have really helped me, supported me through this whole process and I've gotten a lot of questions. I've had people messaging me, which I love. So thank you so much. You find me on Instagram or you comment here in the videos, but um, I've had a lot of people asking for recommendations on things and I figured, you know what, it is now time to do a video to kind of recommend all of the things. My disclaimer is everybody is different. So what works for me may not work for you, it may not work for others, but these are just the tried and true pieces that I love, that have helped me pre-surgery, and even that have helped me post-surgery. So, let's get right to it. All right, first and foremost, the most important thing that I purchased for this disease is my ice machine, okay? So I talk about this in another video and this has been a godsend. So the ice machine was the very first thing I purchased. My wonderful husband bought it for me because when you have nerve pain, as many of you know, if you're living with this, you kind of get this like burning sensation. The ice machine, oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Highly recommend. So what I've done is I actually created an Amazon kind of storefront and I have all of my items that I use on a daily basis, sometimes still even on a daily basis now post-surgery, but I've got them linked. So if you are interested in anything, uh, the link is in the description below to my storefront and you can check it out and get it right there. But the ice machine is number one. Now, if you're having surgery with Dr. Fagenbaum in Texas, then I will tell you, you'll leave the hospital with one of these. So they actually, um, here is the pad that you use. This is what the ice kind of goes in the bucket and then circulates through this pad and it just clicks off of here. So you'll get one of these when you're recovering from surgery in the hospital and they hook it up to a actual like hospital grade machine, but then they'll unclick the pad and give you that along with one of these travel buckets for when you leave. So you'll have that for when you're traveling home too, something to think about. But I purchased it right when I got diagnosed. It was so important for me, but absolutely after. So now I have two, which is nice. I mean, I keep one, you know, kind of in the basement where our TV is, and then I keep one up in my bedroom. Love, love, love this. Highly recommend. I think this one was about 150 and there's several different brands and kind of styles online in the stores, whatnot, but this is um, just the particular one that I liked and it's very similar to the one that they send you home with. Now, the other piece that goes with that, that I recommend, and you're gonna, you'll hear kind of different stories on this, but um, you need, you fill the ice machine, <clears throat> you fill that bucket part with water and then you put ice, obviously, in it to make it cold ice machine, but you can go through a lot of ice. Even if you have an ice maker on your fridge, um, it can, you'll go through a lot of ice. That thing will be running 24 seven. So what I did is actually purchased some of these little plastic ice cubes. I purchased a whole big bag of them. This is actually half of them. Um, but what I do then is I put half of them in the ice machine when I'm using it, when it's time to use it. And then I leave the other half in my freezer. And when it's time to use my ice machine again, then I can swap out. So I constantly have some ice in the machine or I have ice in my 
in my freezer ready to go and I'm not having to make new ice and, and do all of that. So I have LinkedIn where a bag of these little plastic cubes. I don't use them for anything else other than my ice machine. It has been really, really nice. Some people like to take water bottles, like maybe 20 ounce water bottles, keep them in your freezer and then stick them in the bucket along with the water because then that helps as well. But I have found that these little plastic ice cubes have been great way for me to just always have ice readily available. So those are my first two must-haves. The next thing that I purchased actually was this um, ice pack belt. So this is the ice pack right here. So you put this in your freezer and it's a hot and cold pack so you can warm it. I just always keep it frozen and you keep that in your freezer. And then this belt part is actually Velcro and this is great for when you're on the go. So you just put it around your waist and then put your, you know, you can put your shirt over the top of it. And this is a nice piece if you're traveling and you obviously can't use your ice machine in the car, then this is a great handy piece to take with you. Um, if you're gonna be somewhere where maybe you're gonna go outside and you wanna do a little bit of yard work or something that your body can handle, but you know that you need that, then this is a great way to not be attached to something, but to be able to wear it kind of discreetly and um, just a nice piece that I got to as well. So a great, that was another recommendation from a fellow sister. Uh, the other purchase that I made right away was this seat cushion. Now, I will tell you there's controversy with the seat cushions because there are lots of them on the market. And some people love this one. Some people hate this one. This is what has worked for me. Again, my disclaimer. Um, what I love about it is it's got this cutout here for your tailbone. So you kind of set it on the um, chair and then you sit on it so that your tailbone is directly kind of in line with this. This is the comfy life seat. Now there is, um, this one is a memory foam. There is kind of a gel cushion one as well. Um, again, this works for me really, really well. I take this everywhere. I have no shame. I actually went to a dinner the other day with some friends and it was an event. It was a fundraiser dinner and I knew I was going to be sitting for a while. I had no shame and walking in that thing with this rolled up under my arm. I, as soon as I walked in, I just put it on my chair and I knew I was good to go and it was a lifesaver. So don't feel bad. This will be going with me to work. Uh, I do have the flexibility of working from home, but on the days that I'm going in the office, this will be coming along with me for sure. All right, so that's another thing there. Um, some of my other post-op must-haves. First and foremost is a kind of a desk rolling, rolling desk. I don't know how the best way to say that, but you know when you're at the hospital and they have those kind of side tray tables, they're like a U shape and you just roll it right under your, it kind of rolls under your bed or your couch or whatnot. Yes, love that, okay? I will try to loop in. I think I have a video of me using it, so I'll loop that in here. But my sister bought me that for Christmas and it was a must have for me in recovery because you can't bend, lift, or twist. And even now I'm two months out and it's you're still kind of supposed to be limiting doing those actions. And it's hard to do that when you are laying in bed all the time when you're trying to even just eat, use your computer, you know, get something to drink. So that has been amazing. I just have it right next to my bedside. I roll it over the top of my bed. It's adjustable height up and down and must have. So I have that linked into my shop as well where you can purchase one of those. And then kind of going along with that, the no bending, lifting and twisting is my grabber, which I totally forgot to, um, I forgot to bring that here. My little grabber, I bought one for 10 bucks. Again, another great tool because if you drop something uh, next to your bed or you just need to grab you know, something within arm's reach, then it's kind of that extender tool that helps you and keeps you from bending over to pick it up. So another really important piece, I will probably use that forever now because I still have it right next to my bed and I use it all the time. If I, you know, if I'm, I drop the remote or whatnot, then I easily use that piece. Uh, other tools that have helped me. Now, there's a lot of wellness pieces. That's kind of what I've called my little storefront on Amazon is my wellness tools. And 
Something else that may be a little unconventional, but for me dealing with this disease and going through this journey was just as much of a mental thing than it, as it was kind of a physical, you know, syndromes and whatnot. So I really was in tune with trying to figure out how to keep my energy up and to keep a positive mindset. And I got involved in, you know, learning more about your energy and I went to a Reiki master and I had a Reiki session. I talked about that in some of my other videos. I was never into that kind of stuff prior to this. I mean, I was always intrigued by it, but not really like into it. And since getting through all this, I just, anything that I can do to help my mind frame, I was willing to do. And that was, you know, gonna be safe and comfortable for me. So some things that with that, um, I can tell you, I learned that bloodstone. So if you're into crystals or anything there, Bloodstone is a healing stone. So my Reiki master, when I had my Reiki session, she actually let me pick out a bloodstone. And that was really important for me leading up to surgery. But I did wrap it and I have worn this almost every single day since just to give me that healing energy. That's what I was hoping to come from that. And then another thing that I kind of got into was um, essential oils. So I do have this really cool chakra bracelet. And I again, I link that into my Amazon storefront, but it does have these kind of lava beads on it. I made this one, but it has these lava beads that you can put essential oils on. So what the essential oils I love are lavender. Lavender is really good to help you kind of just calm your mood and to help you sleep. So I use the um, lavender essential oil. I put it on my little lava beads. I put some of it on my wrists, kind of underneath my ears here in my back of my neck. And then I do have a spray bottle as well that I spray some on my pillow. But I've loved that. So essential oils was another kind of big thing. And then at going along with the kind of the crystals and the stones, my team at work actually sent me a care package to kind of stuff that would help me with recovery or as I was traveling. And in there was this really cool chakra kind of healing worry stone. It's got a little divot in it that you can, you know, kind of just rub. This has become like one of my best friends. I, it's got all the different uh, stones from the different chakras. I know that there's jade in there and there's amethyst and tiger's eye, but they all have their own kind of different healing qualities to them. And I love, I just, I use this, I kept it in my pocket. It's really smooth. It's just kind of one of those calming, I don't know how to even explain it, but I have loved this and just highly recommend it. Again, just another piece that I recommend. I kept it in my pocket as we were traveling, after surgery, prior to surgery, all of that. I just used it, I rubbed it, and I just said a few prayers and it helped to calm me and just bring me some tranquility and peace of mind. So that's another really great thing that I love. Um, prior to surgery, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, they do tell you to use HybaCleanse. So I use the little foam uh, dispenser. I wasn't sure how much to get. They don't really tell you how much you need, but um, I did get this is a 16 full ounce. And as you can see, I still have quite a bit in there and I used quite a bit of it. So a little bit goes a long way, but I do have this in there. You need to use this. Uh, I think it's like three days every day prior to surgery just to help get your skin. Um, it's a, like an antibiotic or not an antibiotic, but a, a yeah, a Antiseptic, that's what I was looking for, antiseptic. So a nice cleansing uh, body, all over body cleaner. And what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something because I don't have everything right. Oh, okay, so other things to help me in recovery. Joggers, I can't wear jeans yet. So I'll tell you that much. I have lived in joggers and lounge pants. I can't wear denim yet just because of the incision, where it's at on my back and they're just, denim is tighter. My jeans are usually tighter and it's just a harsher fabric. So I don't like it rubbing on my incision. So joggers and lounge pants for the win. Shoes were tricky for me because I'm a pageant girl. I am used to wearing six inch, six inch heels. I'm used to wearing heels. I'm a high heel girl. And when this all kind of struck, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And so I really went for comfort, but I still wanted something cute and stylish. I absolutely love my Skechers memory foam tennis shoes. 
They are such cute little sneaker. I have the all black. I have those linked in my store as well. The most comfortable pair of shoes I've ever worn. I love that they don't have a tie so that I can slip them on. I don't have to bend over to put them on. They easily go on by just kind of slipping your foot in. You can wear socks with them or you don't have to. They're even just as comfortable without wearing socks. So as we get into the summer, uh, that's probably what I'll be doing. I kind of wear them with everything. They were the only pair of shoes that I took with me to Dallas when I traveled because they were just everything that I needed. Other things too are a full body pillow, okay? I'm a side sleeper, so I've always kind of slept with like a small pillow in between my knees. And especially when all of these symptoms started, that just kind of helps to take a little bit of pressure off of your tailbone, depending on where your cysts are. If they're on your sacrum area like mine were, then that was a really helpful piece for me. But as I got home from surgery, I felt like I just needed something more. A full body pillow, has been amazing. I can lean up on it. I can use it in between my legs if I need to. It's just the perfect little thing to have. And I did not have that prior, but as soon as I got home, I told my husband, I'm like, will you please go get me a body pillow? And so I have that linked as well. Um, you can get them anywhere, but if you don't feel like going out, um, traveling anywhere or stopping anywhere, then easily you can get them on Amazon. And highly, highly, highly recommend that. I think that's for the most part everything that I have in there. I, If you want to check out my, my storefront, again, I have the link in the description. I'll continue to add things as I think of them, but these are some of the major pieces. I do have some other, um, oh, cleansing wipes. You wear makeup. You can't bend, lift, or twist during recovery for quite some time. So I started using makeup removing wipes. I'm always a I always wash my face every night before I go to bed. And that was something that was really difficult to do in recovery. And so I got the makeup cleansing wipes. Body wipes are really good, especially after surgery. You can't shower for like 72 hours. That's something that you might want to continue to use in recovery. Um, there are some other uh, ointments and things that I have found to be helpful because of mine being in my sacrum. I had a lot of other kind of symptoms throughout my hip, throughout my pelvic, and even through my genitals. And so that is, uh, there's some things in there that can kind of help you with that. Nerve pain can sometimes be itchy. It gives you little zings. So I found some, some great creams and things to help with that. Yeah, I think that's for the most part, everything I can think of that I would highly recommend as you're going through, unfortunately, this tar love cyst disease journey. So if you're watching this and you're a caregiver for somebody, then maybe these are some pieces that you could surprise them with as a nice gift, like, hey, I'm thinking of you, or you wanna put a care package together for somebody that's getting ready to go and have surgery, then there might be some items that you would consider throwing in there for them. And if, the, if you're going through this, then know that I'm here for you and I'm so sorry. I hope that this provides you some hope and some help. And again, my disclaimer, not everything is for everybody, but I, I'm hopeful that you maybe find something in here helpful for you. Uh, but let me know if there's other pieces or things that I may have forgotten, comment, and I will absolutely get them added to my storefront for other people. And let me know if there's another video you'd like to see. I'm planning on doing another follow-up in about a month after I've been to work for a while, just to kind of let you know how I'm doing. But so far, so good as I'm two months post-op, my tar love cyst surgery. Thank you so much for following along this journey, and I hope that you found this video to be helpful. Bye, everybody.